So I'm here to talk to you about the next generation of electric bikes, but first, I want to talk a little bit about joy. So what we always remember at Wheel is that the reason we ride is because bikes are a joy. Uh, this is my wife and kid riding right here. So the reason people ride and keep riding their bikes is because they experience this joy. And the question that, that comes up then is if bikes are already a joy, why do we need a next generation of bicycles, of, of electric bicycles? So we have a good example here. So this is Alan, and he's trying to push a bike that weighs more than him up the stairs. What happens when we talk about electric bikes is people bring up problems with them. Weight, security, uh, uh, safety. And so I want you to keep this image in your head of him uh, trying to push the bike up the stairs. For most of the people here, you're already a good rider, and riding has become a habit. So you've become habitualized to what it's like to ride a bike. But I think it's important that we think about what people who are new to bikes are actually experiencing. There's a dolly image here. What they're experiencing is fear. So it's like riding, or it's like driving in the snow. For most new riders, getting started from a stop, stopping, worrying about traffic is so overwhelming that they actually can't think about anything while they're riding. And so the solutions to this right now are skills and infrastructure. Make it safer for a rider by making the roads safer or teaching them skills. So a lot of people will have to learn how to brake and use two brakes on their bike is an example of a skill that a lot of us here might have, but is not common. Horace here, on this stage a couple of years ago, he mentioned that micromobility is a mind for the bicycle. And so we took that literally, and we decided to build a mind for the bicycle. And so this is the first uh, pre-production prototype of that bike right here. And it's a bike-shaped electric vehicle that is meant to exist in a car-shaped world that most of, most of us find ourselves in, where the built environment is meant to protect cars and this is a bike that will not require the skill um, and infrastructure to be safe. So this might seem like technology that we've shoehorned into an application, but we'll go back to 1897. The Wright brothers uh, built a bike, and it looks pretty similar to the bikes, looks pretty similar to the bikes that we're all familiar with right now. The progress with bikes has been slower than with other vehicles. So cars have changed a lot in the past 115 years. Uh, planes, the exact same Wright brothers who built that plane were building bikes. And technology has poured into these other vehicles. And what's really defining them now is software. So the way electric bikes work right now is that they've added mechanical complexity to existing bikes, which makes sense. You've added a motor, battery, uh, sometimes they've added ABS systems to a few bikes. But what the bike can do is limited by the hardware that it comes with. So we asked Dolly again, uh, what does a modern electric bike look like? It's complicated. There is a bunch of mechanical components that are added with every new generation of bikes. Sometimes they hide it in the frame, but it's actually becoming mechanically more complex. So Rivian CEO, uh, he mentioned doing a clean sheet design. That's what this bike is. We've designed it so that all the meaningful features of the bike are defined in software. So the motors in the front and the rear do the braking. Pedaling is regen. And then also, we have a steering motor in, in this bike. Some of you may have seen the videos of our bike. I won't be showing those, but what this bike does uh, with a person on board is what people haven't seen. And so it acts as a rider assist and a balance assist, and it's really focused at new riders. So the, uh, the bike has 360 awareness. It knows when it's in a bike lane. It knows where it is in a car lane. And then it helps the rider to stay safe in that, in that lane. So when you're riding, the bike will actually assist you in a way that we're familiar with from cars. So features like ADAS, 
lane assist, auto braking, cruise control. They're features on this because they are in software. So the basic hardware that we have on this bike, where we've stripped away the mechanical complexity and replaced it with software complexity, are what we think of as a mind for the bicycle. So on this bike, those settings I mentioned are in the app. And the view that you're gonna see when riding the bike is very similar to what you would see on a Tesla. So seeing that a car is coming up behind you, hearing that a car is coming up behind you in, in AirPods. And then this is a good example of someone who'd ridden the bike for 20 seconds, hopped on, and then ridden across the room with no hands. The bike detects what's going on and automatically stabilizes you to make it a friendly vehicle for new riders. This is the bike riding with no one on it. So we started this company as an autonomous bike company, but what we've done is taken that technology to benefit riders when they're on the bike. We're not showing the video because it's a little too striking. It's not the only memory I want you to have of what we're doing. So here's Alan again taking a bike that weighs more than him up the stairs. And this was a software feature that we completely designed. And so it was an idea that occurred to us. And so that's what the mind for a bicycle is gonna look like in the future, is where meaningful features come out in software. Thank you.